Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to be taking a look at something which is absolutely annoying, but it's actually relatively hard to diagnose. But I think I may have just dialed in, so this video might be helpful to you if you're suffering from the phenomenon known as mouse micro stutter. Now, there's various reasons why you may have mouse micro stutter, so we're going to cover those first of all because it is actually important to kind of get some of the ground rules in place so you know whether it is actually a fault of your computer, the hardware itself, or maybe some other thing in your house which is affecting it. So the first thing to do is to just kind of look over the basics. Now if you get your mouse, the first thing to do is the obvious thing. So if for some reason when you're actually scrolling around or moving around you find that every now and then your mouse cursor or your pointer just skips a little bit, there's obviously going to be a reason for it. Now it could be down to the USB, some issue with the USB which is potentially what it could be. We'll look at that later. Other things obviously physical damage to the sensor itself. So you easiest thing to do is to look at the sensor which is generally at the bottom and just give it a clean make sure that it's got absolutely no debris on it whatsoever because that can trick the sensor so you can always grab yourself something like a, a q-tip or cotton bud as we call them here in the uk and just give the sensor a little bit of a clean sometimes they do get greasy and dirty etc and even just by the human eye you may not detect it so do give your sensor a little clean that could be the answer to your problems now the next thing is going to be the fact is your mouse actually usb or is it wireless. If it's a wireless mouse, then potentially it could be wireless interference. Wireless mice generally work on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum, which is also part of the Wi-Fi spectrum and also other devices in your house, such as potentially a cordless telephone, even your microwave, possibly some smart devices. So if you've got any of those in and around your desk area, then potentially they could be causing interference. So ideally what you want to do is, if possible, take your mouse and the wireless adapter into another room which has possibly less interference and give it a test in there, perhaps with a laptop or some other type of device that you can plug your mouse into. Also, something else you can try, which actually in some instances will be better, is physically plugging in your mouse's USB port into a different port on the back of your computer. If potentially you've got it into one of the front mounted ports, those inherently can be unstable and are not always the best quality. So as a little bit of a sanity check, you can just plug in your USB to the back of your computer directly into your motherboard and try various ports, perhaps try a USB 2 port or one of your faster USB 3 ports. These can sometimes be problematic, especially with the USB 3 ports, as we'll see a little bit later, due to the way that the drivers are actually installed in the system and they can actually increase latency or issues due to the polling rates. But we'll take a look at that later on in the video. So at this point now you've exhausted all of your kind of investigative things. You've tried your mouse on another computer and potentially you're getting the same thing, or maybe you're not. Hopefully you're not, in which case it does point to the USB ports, which is something we're gonna take a look at next. So we're gonna go into Device Manager. Now I would say before you do this next process on your PC, potentially you might wanna firstly back up your PC and secondly, make sure you don't have any other running applications on your computer. So shut down as many things as possible. If you've been working on a really, really long Word document and you haven't saved it yet, of course, do save that and uh, get ready because we are going to have to turn off the PC in a slightly unconventional way. So let's get straight on with it. So this is our Windows 11 desktop and uh, this mouse, you can actually test your mouse to see if you suffer from this problem. So just do some gentle circles with your mouse. And in some instances, depending on your screen refresh rate, you may see that there's uh, more gaps in the mouse trail than you would normally see, or you can actually kind of feel it. So it kind of almost like skips a beat. Now, currently this is actually doing really well because I've actually cleaned this up earlier on today. So it is working absolutely fantastic. Anyway, let's take a look at what is going on. So what we want to do is to go down to the start flag, right click, and we want to go into Device Manager. Now you can go to Device Manager, other instances, you can type in the search bar, etc. However you want to get there, that is entirely up to you. So when we're in Device Manager, what we want to do is to go right down to the bottom here, and these are the areas we're going to be looking at, the Universal Serial Bus Controller and the Universal Serial Bus Devices. So obviously USB, Universal Serial Bus, for those that weren't sure. Now some things you can do, if you look in controllers, you'll see there's a whole bunch of stuff there. If you've swapped over your motherboard platform, maybe you've gone from AMD, AM4 to AM5, or you've gone from Intel, you've swapped out a motherboard, and generally they have different controllers. So what you can do is go into View and choose Show Hidden Devices, and you should see some in here which are grayed out, such as this one here. So this is a device which has either been installed previously, but is no longer in use, or is not plugged in. 
So the ones that are grayed out, generally you can quite happily remove them. So in order to do that, highlight it, right click, and choose uninstall device. Click on uninstall, and it will get rid of it. So ideally what we want to do is have all of these solid, and also for controllers and serial bus devices. Now yours may look slightly different, but the principle is the same. So we've done that. The next thing we wanna do is to actually make sure that the actual USB host controllers, which are the important part of this, actually have the right drivers. So we can pretty much ignore all of these items down here, such as the root hub, etc., because all of these are actually extensions of these devices here. So the top ones are kind of the more important one. USB 2 is the one we're actually worried about least because quite often the USB 2 controller is actually a subsystem of the USB 3 controller. Sorry if this is going over your heads a little bit, but it kind of should make sense. So what we want to start off with is, like I said, if you haven't done so already, close down any open applications, programs, anything which needs saving, do that now, because we will lose control of our keyboard and mouse very, very shortly. So what we want to do is to first of all go to our Asmedia USB 3.1 host controller. We're going to right click on it and we're going to choose uninstall device. We'll get a warning come up saying, you do you want to do this? We're going to click uninstall. You'll get the USB ding dong going on. We've still got control of our mouse, so we're all good. So that one isn't the problem. So we'll go through the, the listings from the bottom, working our way up. So we'll do uninstall device, click on uninstall. You'll hear some dinging of USB devices being disabled, etc. But we've still got currently control of our mouse. So this is not the controller which is at fault. So you may get this warning come up saying system settings change. Do you want to restart your computer? If you've still got control of your mouse, the answer is going to be no. So we're going to choose no and we're going to carry on. So go to the next host controller, right click on it and choose uninstall device. Click on uninstall again. And um, yep, it's still removing bits. So we're, we're still good at the moment. This particular host controller is not responsible for our mouse input. So we can carry on as it is and wait for it to finish. So we've got the system settings change. Again, we still have control of our mouse. So we're gonna click on no, we don't wanna restart quite yet. And it's narrowing it down. So we'll do the last of the USB 3.1 controllers. So we'll do uninstall device again and click uninstall. And yep, our mouse is still working. As you can see, our devices have dramatically reduced here. So what we've got left, so the last one of the host controllers is gonna be this one. So this one is actually likely to be controlling our USB composite device and also our USB root hub. So we're gonna right click on this, we're gonna choose uninstall device. And yep, our mouse cursor has disappeared. So now what we wanna do, just wait until we get the message come up on the screen saying about, do you want to restart your computer? You sh should still hear some uh, USB bing bongs to let you know if something's been installed or uninstalled. And that'll just keep on going, but just be patient and let it do its thing. Okay, at which point now, if we shake our mouse, we've got no control over the system whatsoever. So we've got the option there to finish removing the device, you must restart your computer. Do you want to restart your computer now? Now obviously you have no control of your keyboard or mouse, so nothing is working whatsoever. So what you have to do now is to just press the power button on your computer. Don't press the reset button, press the power button, and it will still execute a smooth or relatively clean shutdown. So I'm gonna go do that now. Press the power button and it's shutting down Windows. Now this is actually preferable because if you do restart, it's just gonna basically ruin what we've just done. We want a clean shutdown. The reason behind this is because when we shut down and then when we turn the computer back on, which we're gonna do now, this is actually now gonna reload the correct Windows WHQL USB drivers before we actually even get to the point where we log into Windows. So that is very important that we do that. Okay, so the computer has now restarted and uh, we have control of our mouse and also we have our keyboard as well, so that is awesome. And you should find now that if you uh, have a problem with your USB ports, and that is what is causing your micro stutter, then you should find that by doing these circles and waiting to see if there's any lag, this should have cured the problem. Now, if it hasn't, potentially you might need to go to the motherboard manufacturer's website and actually install the specific USB 3 drivers for your specific motherboard. Of course, if you're not sure how to do that, you can reach out to us on our Discord and we can try and help you with that. It's really straightforward. Just type in your motherboard model number, go to their website, 
go to tools, settings, drivers, etc., and just download the USB drivers for your specific motherboard. It's relatively straightforward. Again, could be down to the fact that your mouse hit has actually got a fault. You can validate this by using your mouse on another device or maybe taking it to a friend's house, plug it into their PC and trying it, see if it, what happens there. That will obviously give you the reason why your mouse or whatever is lagging in Windows. But overall, this should help you towards fixing the problem. Hopefully it will do. Again, if you're not too sure or there's anything you didn't understand, feel free to reach out in our Discord chat. So there you go, there are some options on how to uh, try and remedy the dreaded mouse micro stutter. It is an absolute pain in the backside. I've had it with my Intel system actually, and it's been uh, driving me slightly mad. I thought it was down to a wireless connection, but it turns out I plugged in a wired mouse and I was still getting it. So I went through, did the drivers thing, and it actually helped. Like I said, also, you might need to actually go to the manufacturer of your motherboard and download the appropriate USB 3.0 drivers. Sometimes the Microsoft Windows updates will actually kind of interfere and include their own drivers, where really it needs to have the motherboard's own specific ones. But again, that's possibly a, uh, a job for another video. So anyway, hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, smash that like button. Also, if you uh, want to see more content of this on a daily basis, then maybe you could consider hitting the subscribe button and also the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.